archive. Uh, Shepard was here. Hope you're all well. So I have um, been invited to uh, answer a few questions, which I would like to do now. So first question is, goody or baddie, which do you prefer to play in Panto? Hmm. That's a toughie. So I spent quite um, a lot of years uh, in my early panto career playing the baddie. Um, mainly Ugly Sister, which uh, I think with Uglies, there's something about it. You get the booze, you get the laughs, you get the comedy, you get everything. So um, that's that was quite an interesting one. And then I also did King Rat and I also did um, an alternative flesh creep as well. Uh, and I really enjoyed both of those. So there's something about being a baddie. I always say, if you get the booze, then you know you're doing your job right. It's a bit like a comedian. If you get your laughs, you're doing your job right. So, um, mm. but I've now turned the corner and I am now playing Dane, uh, which I've been doing for quite a few years now at the King's Theatre in Portsmouth. Um, so I have to say, because I think you get a little bit more of a free reign, um, not too much, obviously, um, but I feel like there is something a bit more exciting about playing the Dane. Uh, so I would probably say a goodie, although I did do a baddie um, uh, Baroness a couple of years ago, but she had a bit of a comedy twist. So it was a bit of both there. But yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely a goodie. Number two, if you could appear in a panto with any other celebrity, living or dead, who would it be? Hmm, that is a tough one because there's quite a lot actually. Sorry, I'm really sweating. It's probably the, it's the hottest day of the year. Um, uh, who would I say? I mean, it's got to be. You know, I mean, I love people like Frank Sinatra, but that's obviously not going to be. Uh, well, maybe he would have done Panto at some point. Um, but uh, I've been very lucky with the people that I have worked with. Uh, one person who I absolutely loved working with in Panto and I did it for, uh, for two years on the trot and that was Bradley Walsh, uh, who at the moment doesn't do Panto, but we need to get him back on the ball to do Panto again. Um, so um, that doesn't really answer your question uh, because I've already worked with him. But I would probably say going back Probably people like Frankie Howard, because uh, I love that sort of comedy. Um, Tommy Cooper, Morecambe and Wise. Yeah, all, all of those sort of stars, all the all the old time stars that really knew their panto craft. So, um, yeah, so that's some living and some dead. Prior to the dreadful outbreak of COVID-19, did you have any plans already in place for a 2020 21 panto how has this affected you well so this is an interesting one so we planned at the king's theater in portsmouth to do peter pan um with myself and john chalice uh and john was captain hook um but we decided very very early on in lockdown i think it was basically like the first week of april because we knew that was going to be one of the big things that affected us at the theater so we decided that we wanted to make sure whatever happened, we were going to put on a panto. So what if the government allowed us, we were going to do it. So from April, we decided we would can Peter Pan and we would push it to 2021, which is done. And then we said, let's do something else. So we decided to do Dick Whittington. Now, the reason we did that is because Dick Whittington is probably a slightly cheaper panto to do. Um, with regards to you no know, flying, I mean, you can have flying, but Peter Pan is so elaborate. If you don't fly in Peter Pan, it's probably not worth you doing it. Um, so we decided that we would go for Dick Whittington. And we, as I say, we did that in April and we've stuck to our guns and we are still pushing through. We cast it now. We just ca uh, cast Sean Smith from uh, Same Difference. Uh, who was announced yesterday, so that's very exciting. And as long as the government allow us to do it, we are going ahead. We have got everything in place and we are so excited. So hopefully you guys can come along and see it. Uh, number four, did you watch Panto as a child? What was your earliest memory of it? Hmm. So I remember going with the school 
um, they took us down to, I think it was Plymouth, and uh, I saw Jack Tripp as the Dane and Roy Hudd as the uh, comedy character. And it was a masterclass. Jack Tripp was just something else. He was brilliant. Um, and I just thought his Dane was just gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Um, so that's really my earliest memory. And then obviously after that, I mean, I, I did my first panto when I was probably 20, 18, 19, 20, maybe. Um, so I did go as a, as a youngster and it was always to the King's Theatre, uh, the local theatre. Uh, didn't really get, get out much. Um, but then, as I say, from sort of when I when I turned professional and I think it was about 18, I did my first professional panto, uh, which was uh mother goose at the guildford electric theater and i was a comedy duo um so that was my first professional panto many many years ago number five have you ever worked with anyone in panto who you did not enjoy performing with maybe a diva or someone just doing it for the money and hating every second <laughs> There's probably been a few of those. Um, now, how can I say without actually not mentioning any names? Because it's quite difficult. Um, it's a certain type of person that's not really had much panto experience, um, who I've worked with a couple of those, where they are a, um, a celebrity basically come out of nowhere. So say, a Taui person um, who I think uh, was there just for the money. Um, didn't particularly like going on stage, wasn't that bothered about a three show day, uh, would call in and go, oh, I don't really want to do the first show. Um, is it all right if I come in for the second show? Wander on with half a costume on, not really bothered. And that really did annoy me, if I'm honest. Um, and I'm not I'm not a diva in any shape, form, um, but it really, really did get to me when you know you're out there giving your all and the rest of the cast giving everything and you know that they're on a fortune and they're just not um, playing. They're not playing the game. And um, that that really upset me. But I'm not mentioning any names um, and I'm sure there will be more to come. But mostly everyone that I've worked with have been an absolute dream 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 um so that that's it that is my questions um so i am as i say i'm doing dick whittington at 28th of november to december the 31st i've got it written down all tickets are 20 quid 20 pounds for the whole um whole auditorium so um obviously it's social distance please 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 um, let's hope that they lift that and then we can go full capacity. But I just want to say it's so sad. Um, people that have had to cancel already, um, Kudos, um, Evolution, or Imagine, you know, lots of these uh, big producers. Um, I'm really sorry to hear that. And I hope that you can do something in place of a panto or maybe even a smaller panto. Uh, I know Evolution are doing a pop-up one in Sheffield, which I think is a brilliant, brilliant idea. Um, so... That's really sad, but I know Panto will be back bigger than ever next year. Um, but please, please, all those Pantos that are going ahead, please do support them because it is a real, real big thing for, for regional theatre. Um, and it's really important to us as well as, as actors because we want to see you. We want to give to you as much as you give to us. So thank you. And one last thank you is to Panto Archive for um, inviting me to do this video. Um, thank you. And thank you for all the work. I do love following you. I get all my updates from you. So thank you. You've been a dream. And everyone else, bye-bye for now.